So let's say there were a bunch of us sitting around a campfire and uh, we were talking about what would make the perfect submachine gun. We want something that's sexy, something that's easy to control, something that has a very fast cyclic rate, something that holds uh, a ton of ammunition. Um, since we're going for fantasy, something that's really inexpensive to shoot, something that's reliable. Um, it sounds like we probably would would be into fantasy and out of reality three or four choices ago, but in all reality, what we'd be discussing is the American 180 submachine gun. Now the American 180 is an Austrian based design. It has an extremely fast cyclic rate, some say in excess of 2,000 rounds per minute. Uh, it is a select fire gun, fires from an open bolt, uh, in this case semi-auto or full auto. It's fed from a drum. These original drums were supposed to be 180 rounds. I found most of them to be 176 for some reason. But it is several tiers of 22 long rifle ammunition uh, and they keep up with the cyclic rate. They do really well. At that extremely fast cyclic rate, a complete burst, an entire drum dump, takes about seven seconds. That's really fast. The guns have synthetic furniture and a lot like the Thompson that they're often mistaken for, they do have a stock that is removable. It does have a finned barrel and uh, sights that are, that are very reminiscent of the, of the Thompson gun. I guess it's a very Thompson-esque firearm, especially if you were to have a vertical foregrip on the front of it. Uh, but that's as close as it gets to the Thompson as far as performance. As a longtime NFA person, uh, 35 years ago, these things were a dream. These things were something that we wished we could have in the United States as a transferable machine gun, uh, but we couldn't. The ban in 1968 uh, created a situation where any machine gun that was imported after 68 was considered a deal or sample and couldn't be owned by an individual. Um, that changed when E&L Manufacturing started making these at their location based right here in the United States and then we finally had some transferable versions at least up until the ban of 1986. The company that's best known for the United States version, the American version of the American 180 is E&L Firearms and they actually made uh, a lot of other accessories, other furniture, other magazines, up to 275 rounds. They're the ones that are most often associated with the American 180 platform. But this other company, S&S Firearms out of Albuquerque, New Mexico, also made some. According to my research, they made 24 of these firearms. All of the S&S guns had a, a serial number with a prefix X0 and this particular one is X024. So I think it's pretty reasonable to assume that this is the last transferable American 180 that was manufactured by them. The furniture most often seen on the E and L guns was a black plastic furniture. On these S&S guns and uh, on some of the Austrian guns, uh, it wasn't uncommon to see a brown plastic furniture. This one even has a, a checkering pattern that's built into the, into the pistol grip itself. It's a blowback operated style and it has a non-reciprocating left side charging handle. So being an open bolt, you pull the bolt back and it locks in that rearward position until you squeeze the trigger. When you squeeze the trigger, it picks up a round from the magazine, chambers it, fires it, extracts and ejects it, and it continues that process over and over based on the mode of operation. If it's set on semi-automatic, you have to release the trigger and then squeeze it again to fire a follow-up round, another round. If it's set in full automatic, as long as the trigger is squeezed, this bolt is going to keep on going from forward position to rearward position until you let off the trigger. It is a 22 long rifle. 22 long rifle is a waxy, dirty round, so they required a lot of maintenance uh, in the form of just cleaning, nothing beyond that. They didn't tend to wear anything out prematurely that I'm aware of. I've owned a few of these in the past. They're a gun that's a lot of fun to shoot. 
it's a lot of fun to own regardless of where ammunition is it's always reasonably priced to shoot if not just downright inexpensive um, of course that's in comparison to all the other types of ammo and uh, man it's just a hoot it's a blast to hand somebody at the range and let them experience it the sound is unlike almost every machine gun that's out there it's not a a series of, of bangs you don't hear bang 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 it's almost a whir sound almost like a chainsaw where everything is blended together because the cyclic rate is so fast you don't you don't have time for one sound to stop and another sound start everything kind of blends together but there's a better way to help you understand exactly what it sounds like let's get this thing out of the range and shoot it not stand here and talk about it So how cool is that? The American 180, a fully transferable piece made by S&S Arms, serial number X024, probably the last one, the last transferable uh, American 180 that was manufactured. Um, it runs like a sewing machine and uh, it's a lot of fun to shoot. It's a really, really neat gun and I was pretty excited to see it come through the door at Poolins especially when they told me that I could share it with all of you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this trip to the range. I hope you enjoyed this peak of the American 180. If you did, please click like, share us with your friends in your vast social media universe. Subscribe to the channel if you don't already, both on Full30 and on YouTube. If you'd like a peek at this stuff a little bit before everyone else sees it, our Patreon family gets to look at these things as an early release. And if you just like to talk guns, the best place to do that is probably Facebook at facebook.com slash guntestvids. Till next time, have fun and be safe.